Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with fresh fig and goat cheese tart. That's right, there's a reason there's quotations around the word tart, because I'm really not sure that's what this is. I mean, I started out trying to make sort of a savory freeform tart, but after a catastrophic crust failure, I was forced to change plans and snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. And by the way, if you guys are good, I'm going to let you try to give this a name in the comment section on YouTube. Oh, I'm sure that's going to go well. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing I attempted to do was make a crust. So I started with some sprouted spelt flour. And to that, I added a little bit of sugar, as well as some salt. And then for my fat, I decided to go with olive oil, which I admit's a little unusual. But I was going for kind of a sweet, savory thing here. And I thought it would pair perfectly with those fresh figs and goat cheese, which it did eventually. So I poured in some olive oil, which unlike butter, we really can't cut into the flour. So I just gave it a mix with the fork. And once that was mixed in, I went ahead and drizzled in some water. And as soon as it started to sort of clump up, I stopped and transferred everything onto my work surface, which is generally where I like to finish the mixing for these type of things. And because a few spots felt a little bit wet, I added a little more flour. And then basically the plan was to push and press this all together and flatten it out into our traditional dish shape before rolling it out into what I thought was going to be a tart crust. And for a while, it was looking pretty good. And then what I wanted to do was transfer it onto a sheet pan where I was going to create this gorgeous kind of freeform tart, you know, like a crostata or one of them there, galettes. But when I went to transfer it, disaster struck. It completely fell apart, and I realized quickly, this dough sucks, and it's not going to work. And it was at this point when most smart chefs would have stopped and started over, but that's not how I roll. I decided to stop thinking and start cooking, and what I did was crumble it up and started patting it into the bottom of two ramekins. I figured if it's going to crumble anyway, let's just go with it. So I pressed about a quarter inch worth into the bottom of each ramekin, sort of like a graham cracker crust. And by the time I had finished applying crumbs to the bottoms of both those dishes, I had turned my frown completely upside down, and all of a sudden things were looking good again. And then once those were set, I started to crumble in my goat cheese. And a pro tip here, make sure your goat cheese is really cold. This had been out for a while, so it was like at room temp, which means it was very sticky and very much not crumble friendly. But eventually I got that done, and it was time to move on to the fresh figs. So I have three gorgeous black mission figs that I sliced up to lay over my goat cheese. And by the way, fresh fig is considered the most sensual of all fruit. Although you don't really get that if you cut it this direction. If you cut these in half lengthwise, oh yeah, very sensual. But anyway, we're going to slice those up, and I'm going to lay those right on top of my goat cheese. And as you may know, figs are a very sweet fruit, so I wasn't exactly sure how much to put on. But as you can see, I did eventually decide on just a single layer, just a single layer. And then once my cheese had been figged, I gave it a little bit of a pressing. I'm not exactly sure why, but it just felt right. And then, believe it or not, it was time for a little seasoning. So I went ahead and I gave these both a very, very tiny sprinkling of kosher salt, as well as an even tinier shake of cayenne. And relax, nobody's going to taste that. But it is secretly slash magically going to brighten everything else up. And then last but not least, we're going to top this with a generous amount of white sugar. So a nice sprinkling of good old-fashioned white sugar. And once that was done, these were ready for the oven. So I transferred these onto a pan and place those in the center of a 450 degree oven for about 20, 25 minutes, or until our figs are nicely glazed and our cheese is bubbling. Except what happened after about five minutes? I questioned whether my crust was actually gonna cook enough because of the insulation of that pan I'd put them on. So not wanting to take a chance, I pulled those off the pan and put them right on the rack, which means a lot more heat's gonna go into the bottom of those ramekins. And since it was already hot, I placed that pan underneath just in case there was any drippage. And like I said, I baked those at 450 for about 25 minutes or until your cheese is bubbling and those figs are nicely glazed. Check it out. For what started off as a total failure, this looked pretty good. So I let that cool down and decided to garnish with some lemon thyme. I know we didn't use it in the recipe. We're not supposed to garnish with it. That's totally wrong. We're using it right now in the recipe. Not only is this going to provide an amazing aroma, but my guests can pick off leaves and use as much as they see fit. So I dressed it up with a little bit of thyme and that fresh fig and goat cheese, whatever you guys end up calling this, is done. And for something that started off as a total failure, looking very, very good. But I've seen a lot of things that look gorgeous that didn't taste good. So of course I had to check. And when I grabbed that spoon and cut through that sweet, juicy fig, or at least attempted to, and mixed it with that tangy goat cheese and that earthy, slightly sweet, pleasantly gritty crust, which featured a little pepperiness and a little bitterness from the olive oil. 
it all ended up being an incredibly delicious bite. Above and beyond showing you a possible new combination of ingredients. I also hope I showed you when things aren't going right in the middle of a recipe, never give up, never give in, because you can almost always still make something incredible. And if you don't and it's horrible, at least you got a story for the water cooler. So I really do hope you give something like this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.